Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will understand one more crucial topic, which is about bean life cycle. It is important as a Spring Boot developer, as well as from the point of interview. Before we get into this, I would request you to join the WhatsApp channel. The link you can find in the description as well as in the community post. Very soon, I'm coming up with the Udemy courses, affordable Udemy courses. So in this channel, I'll be posting the early bird offers, the free Udemy courses, coupons and many more. Please do consider joining this WhatsApp channel. You can find the link in the description. Having said that, let's get started. As you all know that if there is an Java object, what is the life cycle of a normal Java object? During the class loading, whatever code you keep inside the static block that gets executed, Usually we use static block if there is to initialize the you know static variables. However, whatever code you keep inside the static block that gets executed without you invoking automatically during the class loading. If you know the JVM architecture, if not very soon in this channel, I'm coming up with the uh, JVM architecture video also. During the class loading, whatever you code you write within the static block that gets executed. And when you create the instance, when you create the object of a class, constructor will be called. Before the body of the constructor, the Java instance block, Java initialization block gets executed, which is also called as non-static you know, block or normal Java block. Whatever code you keep inside the Java instance block that gets executed, then the body of the constructor, whatever code you write within the constructor that will get executed. Then what whatever methods you have, the business logic which you have written, if you invoke them, they will get executed. This is the typical life cycle of a normal Java object. Now for what we call Spring Bean, Spring Bean is also an object. However, that object is created and managed by Spring Framework. Within the Spring IOC container, object will be created by the Spring IOC container and the management of that object also will be done by Spring IOC container. If a Java object is created and managed by Spring IOC container, we usually call that as the bean. So what is the life cycle of a bean? That is what we need to understand here. You can see we have a constant constructor and you know very well whenever you create the instance of this class constructor will get executed and as I have told you this class object will be created by spring IOC container if it is created by the spring framework then it will only invoke this and whenever this bean is getting created whatever code you write within this constructor that will get executed I would like to invoke you know include the other things also here I will see here static and I will have a static instance block I mean static initialization block or you can say static block I'll say here system.out.println, I will say static block. And then we have a constructor. I would like to include the non-static block also. This is called as non-static block, Java initialization block, Java instance block, multiple names. I would like to go here and write system.out.println. I will say here Java block, I mean non-static Java block. I'll say here non-static Java initialization block. And do we, we have a constructor? I will just right here bean is created i will say here constructor and i would like to include one method business logic method maybe i would like to say here public i will say here a string maybe whatever you want you can write string i will say here generate some wish or the gratings i will say here return return maybe some message i'll say here good morning good afternoon good evening whatever you want some message okay so good night Great. Some business logic is there. Some normal method we have here. Fine. Now, at the top of this class, I have attached one stereotype annotation service referring to this class has the business logic. There is a meaning. Anyway, if you use any of the annotation at the top of the class, which you have understood earlier also, it could be component, service, repository, or the controller, rest controller. This class is managed by Spring. That means this object will be created and managed by Spring IOC container. If it is created and managed by Spring IOC container, in that case, you can call this as the bean. Now we need to understand the bean lifecycle. I would like to go here and run this application. Of course, I now want to know the count of how many beans behind the scene are getting created, which we have understood in the last video. I would like to go here, right click, run as the Java or Spring application. If I have to run this, let me just save and run this application. And please observe the console here, static block, non-static Java installation block and constructor, like a normal Java object. Same way, whatever components we you know usually get executed in a normal Java program, same thing is getting executed in the bean also. Of course, the business logic, the business method will be executed 
only if you have i'll say get bean invoke that method i would like to go here and what was the class name i would like to get it because this class is now this bean is now available with the spring ioc container i would like to go here and i will ask my spring please give me a bean of this particular class because you are the one who is maintaining i'm asking the spring ioc container please give me that and i would you know request you to watch the previous video of the spring core series before coming to this i have discussed so much on the spring you know core i am keeping in mind that those who are watching this video knows the spring core fundamentals which we have discussed in the previous video i would like to go back here and maybe i'll say here greeting greeting type maybe greet is a reference variable okay all right i would like to invoke the business method which we have there i would like to say it generate the wish directly i would like to keep within the system dot out dot printl because i want to print on my console so i would like to just print this save this and run this application once again right click run as spring boot java application and you can notice on the console static block non static java initialization block greetings been created and also good night that means you are getting the business logic like there were normal java object same way spring bean is also behaving however there is something extra with respect to the bean any method which is annotated with post construct will get executed after bean creation after bean creation means bean creation means object creation which is after the constructor after the constructor means whatever is there inside the constructor that will get executed whatever is there in the java block that will be executed during the class loading whatever is there in the static block that also will be executed so after constructor before the actual business logic any method it could be i'll say public void any method i'll give the method name as init the method name need not to be init you can give your own name not a matter of concern any method which is annotated with post construct i'll say here post construct will be executed by the spring so i'll say here post construct i'll say here construct i would like to import this and i'll keep this maybe system dot out dot print and i'll say here bean init method and at the end after executing everything after executing the business logic methods and everything at the end by default i will write one method here maybe void i will say here destroy the method name need not to be destroy the name of the method whatever you want you can give it but i have kept it which is similar to the purpose of this particular method so i'll say here maybe bean destroyed any logic you want you can write here i'm just printing system dot out dot print and it could be anything else also any method which is annotated with pre destroy pre destroy will be executed at the end okay i have saved this you can see we have a destroy method we have a init method am i invoking anywhere you can see here anywhere am i invoking init method and destroy method no i am not invoking any method which is annotated with post construct annotation will be executed automatically after the constructor after the bean creation after the bean creation i am referring to after the constructor execution because you know very well whenever you create a bean whenever you create an object constructor will get executed after which automatically you need not to call that method you need not to invoke that method this will be executed and at the end after everything is over at last automatically whatever method is there which is annotated with pre destroy will be executed by spring ioc container and that is what i want to show here right click run as java application i have to run this i'll open the kerno console you can see here we are getting bean init method this you know particular statement i had written inside the init method which is annotated with post constructor also been destroyed so this message i had written inside a method which is annotated with pre destroy so the typical bean life cycle is similar to the java life cycle one difference here is any method after the constructor after bean creation any method which is annotated with post construct post construct will be executed it could be any method at the last anything whatever business logic methods there based on you calling those method that will be executed at the end you need not to explicitly invoke this method any method if you just annotate it with pre destroy will be executed automatically by spring ioc container so typical bean life cycle static block java installation block 
consider will be getting executed and during this itself if there is anything to be dependent so dependency injection also will be performed at this stage itself what is dependency injection in depth we have understood in our previous videos and then if there are any business logic that will be executed at last before executing everything or after executing everything at last automatically a method with pre-destroy will be executed. So a method which is annotated with post construct will be executed after constructor execution. That means after bean creation and a method with pre-destroy will be executed after all the business logic methods are over at the end. And these methods, which is annotated with post construct and pre-destroy, you need not to invoke them explicitly. Automatically, they will be executed. And this is the life cycle of the spring bean. I hope if you know the Java properly, core Java properly, and if you have watched the previous videos, you are in a position to understand this. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. We'll meet again in the next video.